All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the Clean Tech Showcase. That is uh, a joint event run by uh, GC Ventures and Deep Tech Showcase. There we go. So for today's agenda, we will have uh, some opening remarks, a bit of a discussion, uh, funding opportunities. Um, and then we'll dive into some pitching sessions with uh, some startups um, that we have here to present. Just to talk a bit about Deep Tech Showcase, our, sorry, our vision is to bring Deep Tech to market by leveraging the power of the community. This community consists of startups, tech scouts from the government and corporations, as well as investors looking for deal flow. And we anchor our ecosystem from with monthly showcase events by industry theme. So this event happens to have a clean tech theme, but we have other themes like uh, space, uh, computing, um, you know, advanced materials, energy, uh, aerospace defense, and so on and so forth. And at these events, startups pitch to a panel and audience of tech scouts from the government, major corporations, and to investors. Between our events, we have um, stakeholders like investors, corporation, corporations, and government folks who turn to us to scout specific technologies that they're interested in. So we send over some company profiles um, that uh, are germane to their interests uh, for them to review. And when there's mutual interest, we make a warm introduction and business often follows. Just a quick plug of some of our upcoming pitch events. So as I mentioned, uh, we have a Future of Computing Showcase that is actually um, later this month in about two weeks, November 20th. And then we have an Aerospace and Defense Showcase that is set for January 29th of the new year. We hope to have you join those as well. Um, here are the companies who are going to be pitching uh, throughout the day. So we have uh, VBase, Creative Power Solutions USA, Loop CO2, and Bettergy Corp. And then uh, we also have Rocky Tech, Arctura, Molecular Rebar Design, and GDI. Just a very quick word from our sponsor, Equal Point Funding, which is uh, the company behind Deep Tech Showcase. Uh, they help companies, startups uh, with federal funding opportunities, finding different uh, research grants and contract opportunities for the companies, and helping companies write uh, the story of their tech in a concise, clear, compelling manner. I highly recommend you reach out to um, my colleague there, David Fertig, an accountant executive, and I'll post his uh, contact info in there if you'd like to learn more. And with that, I'll hand things over to uh, Lisa and, uh, and Carol, and they could uh, take it away from there. All right, thank you, Brian. Um, so first of all, I wanna thank Brian again for um, anti tick Showcase for Letting me co-host yet another event. We did the same thing last year uh, and it was super valuable and fun. Uh, I've been a panelist here on the showcase uh, for um, many sessions and both as a panelist as an investor, I find them, you know, really valuable. Um, so again, you know, we we showed the agenda here, but um, we will have two speakers today talking about funding opportunities, Jerry Hollister and Andrew Bray, and um, I'll introduce them in a, a couple of minutes. Um, and then I think Brian already went through the, the pitch sessions. Um, so uh, just a little intro. I am with the Boston-based corporate venture arm of PTT GC, uh, or GC for short. Um, so I'm with GC Ventures. Uh, and we're a Thailand-based petrochemical company and um, the largest polyolefin producer in Southeast Asia. And we are part of PTT Group, which is a national oil and gas company uh, of Thailand. Uh, and beyond our Boston CVC team, uh, we've got a CVC team in Europe uh, and in Thailand as well. Um, and so, um, as I just described, uh, you know, this is this is who we are. Um, we tend to invest in um, a couple of key areas around advanced materials, uh, biotech and life science uh, and clean tech. Um, and Carol, if you go to the next page, we can elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, and so these are sort of the core areas where uh, we either invest in or we facilitate collaborations uh, with startups and other companies 
uh, both with GC and some of our wholly owned subsidiaries. So we look at areas like coatings and catalysis and chemistry, um, industrial, biotech, bioplastics and composites, bio-based chemicals, green chemicals, big focus for us now. I mean, in the clean tech space, you know, uh, CCUS, uh, plastics recycling, and a few other areas. Um, and on the digital platform, maybe more around collaborations and actual investments. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because I know that we're all really here for the discussion um, on funding and um, uh, and also to hear the pitches. Um, but I would like to introduce uh, Carol Rapke. She's with DOE's uh, Partner Pitch Program, and she's going to give you a little bit of insight um, into her program. And then after she speaks, um, I will introduce our uh, funding um, speakers. So, Carol? All right, now that I'm unmuted. Okay, thank you very much, Lisa. And also, I would like to extend a thank you to uh, GC Ventures and to Deep Tech Showcase for um, enabling us to showcase some of the companies that participated in our virtual partner pitch program the last two years. Again, my name is Carol Rabke. I'm a tech to market advisor focused on partnering within the office of SBIR and STTR programs at DOE. So just quickly, why are partners needed? Uh, they're needed because commercialization is a statutory goal of the SBIR and STTR programs. So Congress devotes about $4.4 billion a year to this program, but they want to see investment, or sorry, return on investment of the taxpayer dollars. So taxable revenues, job creation, scientific or societal benefit. And to get there, SBIR funding will only get them so far. So um, we launched in January of 2023, the Virtual Partner Pitch Program that provides an opportunity for these DOE funded SBIR and STTR phase two technologies to be pitched to potential strategic partners or investors. 130 plus, uh, I think it's about 139 have pitched to date. And um, you're going to see a subset of those. You are going to see eight companies that were selected by GC Ventures and Deep Tech Showcase to pitch today. Um, and all of the 130, if you're interested, their pitch recordings are available on the SBIR partnering platform. The benefits of partnering with a small business that has SBIR and STTR funding is that they've received over a million dollars in non-dilutive funding to develop this technology. The majority are at TRL5 to TRL7. They are all cutting edge, advanced technologies. Many are disruptive. They are technologies that can drive your net zero and sustainability goals. They provide immediate competitive advantage. If you're looking within DOD, they are also phase three eligible and they are vetted. They all went through a competitive award process. I think that is our last slide. So I will stop sharing and um, turn it over to Jerry. So I don't know, Jerry, if you want to upload your slides while Lisa introduces you. Yeah, so Carol's program is also great. And I would encourage any investor here on the call to really look into it. I've met some great companies that way. Uh, so next, um, we have Jerry Hollister, um, who is with BBC Entrepreneurial Training and Consulting. Uh, he joined the company in late uh, 2017, uh, and he became co-owner of the company uh, in October of 2023. Today, he leads strategic partnerships and uh, customer development efforts. He currently serves as a reviewer for NSF, DOE, USDA, and NOAA, uh, and he regularly speaks about SBIR, STTR uh, at national and regional conferences. He also worked at a startup called Niawave, uh, and he led a team that received, get this, 45 SBIR uh, STTR awards worth over 20 million. So that's pretty impressive. So Jerry knows your pain. Um, he's uh, an even more impressive background than just that. Uh, so let's welcome Jerry, um, who will talk to you about a range of funding opportunities. All right, thank you. Sorry, I've got a cold that I picked up at a conference last week, but uh, it's great to be here with you. Thank you for um, the invitation and thank you to the sponsors. I got to just run through this really quickly. We're just going to talk about a number of federally funded innovation programs. Um, and so that as you pursue these, uh, Carol already talked about SBIR. I will mention that, but uh, uh, 
uh, that's a little bit more about my history. Um, you, you know, innovation, as Carol already said, I don't really need to redefine it. It's, it's you know, pushing forward the state of the art, new technologies that are enabling new products and services. That's really what the fed federally funded R&D projects or, or programs are looking to fund is innovation. Um, the challenge is, and, and, you know, the, the venture groups like, um, um, you know, Lisa's group here, they want to see that it's past feasibility. The, the venture groups are not going to invest early stage. And so they want to see that, uh, that there's a, a, a viable product that's, um, where's my pointer here, you know, that an MVP, you're past TRL six, seven, somewhere in that range. That's what they're going to want. But the inventor, the inventor themselves, they need funding to get to that point because they've got this basic research they need to convert into a usable product. And so you get into this chicken and egg or eagle and egg um, situation. And that's where these um, these funding mechanisms come in is they're, they're designed to bridge that gap where the federal government will come in. They'll be that early stage, you know, SBIR calls itself the seed fund. Uh, early stage funding mechanism that will bridge that gap, get it from basic idea um, to a usable, well, at least an MVP. And so that's the that's the goal of all these programs. Now, there's a number of them. I'm just going to skip through them really quickly. Um, SBIR, STTR, Carol already talked about it. Uh, by the way, a lot of the success that we had at NIWAY was because Carol taught me so much back in the day, um, 20 years ago almost now. So I'm um, glad to be with her again. But uh, SBIR, STTR, big program, um, three phases to the program. First phase is feasibility. Second stage is where the, you, you prove feasibility in phase one. Then in phase two, the, the, the idea is that you get to the point of an MVP. And then phase three is where the company is selling um, their their product or service commercially. Um, let me talk about some of these other um, programs. Uh, the Technology Commercialization Fund, I believe we're going to hear more about that here in just a second, so I won't say a lot about it, but these live links um, will take you to the information for each one of these. Um, this is a prize program. Uh, they have specific topical areas that you know you want to uh, make sure that your technology aligns with. Um, the American Made Challenges also coming through the Department of Energy. Um, these come out of NREL. These are, again, prize awards. They tend to be smaller amounts at the American Made, and they have several topics every year. So um, if, they're, if you're more earlier stage um, and just getting started, the, then the American Made Challenges could be a good uh, place for you as well. ARPA-E, also out of the Department of Energy, they have two kind of levels of funding. They have regular topics, which are open to both large business and small business. They have various funding levels for the different topics. And then because it's so big and the, Fed, the uh, SBIR kicks in, they also have SBIR topics. And so those are only open to small businesses and they match the funding level of the uh, DOE's uh, uh, SBIR program. So that's 200,000 um, and 1.1 uh, 1 .1 million for phase two. Phase one, 200,000. Um, ARPA-H is similar to ARPA-E, only it's run by the Health and Human Services uh, Department. Um, again, they have regular topics that are open to small and large businesses. And again, they have various funding levels depending on whatever that topic is. And again, they have SBIR topics, which again, only open to small businesses and they match the funding levels. There's several long range broad agency announcements. Uh, several agencies have these. These are uh, DOD is a big one, Homeland Security, DHS, and then NASA. Basically, these are wide open topical areas. They have limited amount of funding attached to them. So um, what, what they're usually used for is to try to get a start to a program and then, then transition, they get some early stage money into um, uh, on the, from this long range. It's basically an open topic, topical area. 
Now, these are also open to large businesses. So this is not a small business set aside like some of these other programs. Um, so if you've got any interest in those, you'd want to make sure to um, connect with the, whoever's running that long range BAA. Um, BARDA, uh, CDMRP, and the um, what used to be called the uh, RIF at DOD, Rapid Integrated Scalable Enterprise. Um, uh, BARDA's out of home, uh, Health and Human Services. This is also open to um, large businesses. CDMRP, Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program, run out of DOD, Department of Army. Um, they have specific topics. They are about half the size of SBIR, so usually about $2 billion a year. So there's some real um, uh, money in at CDMRP. Those are also open to large businesses. And then the RIP, uh, well, it's called RISE now. Um, they have the Office of Small Business Programs at DOD has specific topics, and those are small business set aside. And the links to all those different programs are there. Um, continuum of Capital, SBIR, and some of these other programs are, you, you know, they're pretty early stage. Um, you're wanting to get some of these programs funded, funding your early stage development so that then you're then eligible where, where the venture capital starts to get interested in you. You passed MVP, you've started to have a saleable product. That's when you're investable. Uh, Apex Accelerators, I just put this up there. They are co-funded. Uh, and then the SBDCs, two resources available to you. Um, and this is just kind of shows kind of the tree of all the different, Ivory Leaf has got a different funding mechanism. And some of them are only open up to small businesses. Some are open to large and small, and some are not R&D. We didn't talk about those because you're all the innovation people. But uh that's it. I don't think we have time for questions. I will now hand it back over to Lisa. Thank you. All right, Jerry. Boy, that was a lot of funding opportunity right there in, in 10 minutes. <laughs> well done. I uh, hope folks had a chance to do some screenshots there. Um, so next up, uh, we're going to hear from Andrew Bray. Uh, he's with the Department of Energy's uh, Office of Clean Energy Demonstration, where he's responsible uh, for strategy and program development. And um, prior to that, he was a senior consultant at Aurora Energy Research, as well as being a principal and partner at MXV Ventures. Uh, so Andrew uh, will take us through some DOE-specific funding opportunities um, and uh, get your screenshots ready for this as well. Thanks, Andrew. All right, can you hear me and see my screen? <clears throat> Great, thanks. And thanks for that breakdown, Jerry. Um, I think that's a good wide encompassing. I'll just um, touch on a little bit more OSED focus, um, introduce you to the office, uh, and then a little bit more specifically some of the programs I'm focused on um, and the funding opportunities involved there, um, really focused on commercialization. So. Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations uh, is a couple years old, um, really focused on demonstration projects. So a few key words here in our mission statement, um, demonstration projects at scale uh, and with the private sector, focus on deployment, market adoption, and equitable transition. So really thinking about, you know, as technologies grow, what more needs to happen beyond simply the technical uh, development, you know, all these other factors and bringing private industry along. So that's all the stuff that we're thinking about. This is where it fits in. Uh, right in the middle, we have uh, some of the earlier applied offices, ARPA-E, SBAR, uh, earlier than us, and then LPO with the loan program of office uh, a little bit later stage. So we're we're trying to bridge that divide, fill in that valley of death, um, and create that that continuum. We have a few different provisional technology areas. I think that's just important to keep in mind as you're looking at different funding opportunities just to see what bucket you, you fit in. These are all 
cutting edge, next generation, entire industries that we're trying to lift off. Um, so nuclear, carbon management, um, distributed energy systems, long duration energy storage, hydrogen hubs, and then two place-based ones, rural and remote, um, and then former mine lands. And then all the way at the bottom right is where our programs sit. Um, they're the, what we call the liftoff enabling programs. So programs that tackle things that need to happen for industry liftoff beyond simply putting projects in the ground. Um, and this is kind of our version of the TCF funding. So um, these are primarily funded by the Technology Commercialization Fund um, and directed towards commercialization, innovation, uh, industry adoption. These are um, where our projects are located. So really across all, most all the states and, and growing. Um, and then real quick, so with these big demo projects, um, we do have our OSET exchange page. So if there would be any teams, I mean, these are multi-million dollar demonstration projects, uh, later stage, that's, that's where you would go. Uh, other offices as well, EERE has their own exchange page. So do keep those in mind as, as a source. But I'm going to jump to the liftoff enabling programs um, that I'm supporting. Um, kind of talked about the background with the TCF, Technology Commercialization Fund, source of funding. Uh, and we work very closely with OTT, so they have a lot of great resources uh, in all this, uh, on this specific set aside, and we work very closely with the other offices as well, but really focused on uh, adoption readiness level as much as technology readiness level. Um, so kind of that entire holistic, what needs to happen, um, for the teams and companies as a whole and supporting those endeavors. Um, we do this through a few different mechanisms. Um, one, financial assistance. Those are your, your typical grants often used for the big demonstration projects. I'm going to kind of gloss over that. Uh, but the next one is these prizes that Jerry mentioned. This is a big one for our team in particular. Um, and they're growing in size. So right now we have one focused on manufacturing. It has $30 million available, $5 million for the winning team. So more and more that American Made Network is focused on getting what happens next with these teams' trajectories. So um, do keep those in mind. They're a great way um, to reward work done uh, and really the idea is uh, make the administrative burden a lot easier for, for teams to get money out the door. Um, and then the other mechani mechanism is other transactions. Um, and specifically, um, I'm gonna jump to the voucher program that we have that we do this with. So, um, this is run through Energy Works. Um, they act as an intermediary. And the setup is that um, providers are paid to provide their services for free to recipients. And so we um, providers apply to become providers. Recipients apply with specific requests on modeling, engineering, uh, permitting and siting, a uh, whole marketplace of um, value-added solutions uh, being made available here. We match them up, and there are then specific projects um, built around those that teams can get um, services for. So some examples of uh, descriptions of these services some focus on pre-demo commercialization support, uh, performance validation, modeling and certification, permitting and siting, 
um, and then manufacturing and then industrial decarb. So do check out Energy Works site for um, what's available um, for specific discrete pieces of uh, of services that that you can get, and those are ongoing, uh, open on an ongoing basis, um, and a, a great resource. Uh, then just kind of jumping back to the Make It Prize. Um, so support in a few different of our technology areas. This is really helping get that initial planning to the point that you're you're ready to build um, and uh, really helping get that money out the door and uh, a lot easier. So a few teams currently in, in process there uh, and future opportunities uh, hopefully to come. Um, yeah, and jumping back, I'll, I'll just kind of mention um, the full suite of programs we do have. Um, I talked about the prizes and the vouchers, uh, but along with the national labs, we do have a few other more industry collaboration uh, activities focused on MRV work, uh, hydrogen and long duration energy storage. So um, do check out our page. If anyone's in those fields, we're really trying to make sure that those endeavors are external and industry focused. So that means there's a lot of partners involved with those national lab projects, and it's a great opportunity to just connect and drive those industries forward. Um, and I'll leave with our contacts information. So thank you. Right. Um, well, lots of information there. Thank you, uh, um, uh, Andrew and Jerry, for the presentations. Um, and at this point, I think we are right on time. And I'll hand it back over to Brian to start the pitching. Brian. Awesome. Uh, thank and thank you. I'd like to thank you as well, uh, Andrew and and uh, Jerry. It was great presentations. Uh, I recommend maybe leaving your contact.